Hello, this is uh, Nancy Burton Munson from Elk Grove Village Public Library. Thank you for joining us today for Lunch and Learn. Um, I'm going to kind of give some general information here at the beginning while more people get logged in. I know that we have quite a few people who are going to be listening in today. And then this um, program will be recorded as well for uh, people to watch later. So it'll be available on the Elk Grove Library website. Um, we have our own YouTube page. And so actually you'll, you can access them through our website, but you can also go to the Elk Grove Library's YouTube page and view all the recordings there of past programs. So this um, Lunch and Learn for today about genealogy will be available there. Um, so today we are lucky to have with us Judy Crowley, who is our very own genealogy expert. Judy works at the Adult Reference Desk. Um, she has worked at the library for, Judy, how long? 28 and a half years. 28 and a half years. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, Judy, do you wanna give a little introduction to about yourself? Just about, I know we didn't talk about this before, but I mean, you truly well, are a gene genealogy expert with so well, I'm not a genealogy expert expert but I have been doing it since 1977 and that's when there weren't any databases basically and you had to actually go out to the courthouses and the cemeteries and the uh, archives and that was actually a very good way of learning how to do it because you were physically looking at everything now uh, things have changed through the years and virtually, well, not everything's online, but there's, it's amazing what you can find online. So you don't ever have to leave your house. That is true. It's just that um, sometimes you just don't get the whole feeling of it, which I, 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 I do miss. But otherwise, though, um, it's been a learning um, thing, and I, I just totally enjoy genealogy and searching for it. I got my husband involved. He goes to cemeteries with me and doesn't put up any fuss, which I find kind of amazing. So just before we get into the databases, then you 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 recently did go to some cemetery, oh, a yeah. cemetery up in Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Whenever I go up to up to Wisconsin uh, to see my mom and dad, uh, then the basically the whole family is there. So I just kind of make a tour of the cemetery and find um, where all the other ones are. Uh, I've also um, on a quest to add them all to find a grave. And that's one of the ones I'm, I might uh, put in here today because it is a fantastic site, mm -hmm. uh, of which is a database of cemeteries from all over the country, including Canada. And uh, there's some from England and they're basically just all over. It's it's very good site. It's so find a grave just or a free mm -hmm. site that's available on the internet, but it is a very in-depth database of grave sites all around the world, correct? Right, okay. and they're, they're put on there by people like me and you. And then you, if it's your family, then you can claim ownership so that you can maintain it. But it's, it's amazing. I found obituaries on there, um, pictures, birth certificates, um, it's just, Okay. The amount of information is unbelievable. I'm going to type um, anything, any websites or that um, Judy talks okay. about here. Findagrave.com, so correct? Oh, is, right? um, is it findagrave.com or findagrave.com? Oh, I type that there. But today we are going to be talking about not, not the free resources that are available mm -hmm. online so much as the databases that we subscribe to here at the library. Um, we have a lot of databases in general. We have um, a lot of databases. I'm going to click over right now to our website. Um, okay, here. I'm on our databases. You should be seeing our databases page. I'm going to go back to our homepage really quick here. This is our homepage of the Elk Grove Library website. Um, and you see right in this area that I'm highlighting with my cursor right now, those are where the on-demand videos are accessed a lot. The youth department has a lot, but we have as well um, adult programs listed here, like our recent Medicare 101. So this Lunch and Learn that we're recording today will 
um, you'll be able to access it here. But if you click on the more button, that will take you out to our YouTube page. And under playlists, you can then choose, um, let's see, adult programs right here, adult services programs and view full play playlist. That'll show you all of our adult programs that are recorded. Okay, so I'm gonna go, let me go out of YouTube back to our website. And where you find all our databases are, uh, you can access them two ways, up here at the top where it says databases or under the reference and research button under databases. And then you can see all the categories of databases that we have, which is a, dozens and dozens of databases that we pay for so that our patrons have free access. And then today we're gonna to be talking about some of the genealogy ones. There are many, so we're really just kind of scraping the surface today. And Judy's gonna highlight um, the features of like three of them. Um, and then uh, we'll kind of dig into them a little bit, but remember there's so much there. Um, and, and maybe we'll focus on some of those another time, but today we're gonna to focus on three starting with America's Genealogy Bank. So I'm gonna click into that. Now from home, you're gonna have a point where you need to put in your library card number. Mm -hmm. um, here in the library, we don't have that um, step to do. So, and also just so you know, you are welcome to be in the library searching on these databases here as well. So for example, we do have some patrons who live outside of Elk Grove who don't have an Elk Grove library card who might come and search for these things inside the library. Um, from home though, with the Elk Grove Village library card, you have access to these databases and you'll, it's, um, when you click on the name of the database, you'll be prompted to put in your library card number, which is the, all the digits on the back. Sometimes it might ask you for your PIN number, which is automatically defaulted to the last four numbers of your phone number, um, unless you've changed it to something else. So that brings us anyway here to America's Genealogy Bank. So I'm gonna, um, Judy will tell us now a little bit about this one. Well, the reason what, what I, I this one is because it has two things, America's obituaries, 1977 to current, that's amazingly robust. And if you really are looking for a person, uh, an obituary, more current, then that is the place uh, that I would go to first. And the other one is Social Security Death Index. Uh, there was a big controversy about Social Security Death Index because of the privacy issue. And they kind of calmed down about that. But um, what it is, is if you find a person's name, like, can you click into that one for a second, Nance? Social security? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put in, um, I have, I just want to show you what it looks like. So the last name is Latta, L-A-T-T-A. First name is Kenneth. And his, his, I cannot see it that well. So his date of birth was 1912, the year over okay. here. Um, can I just put the year? Yeah. Okay. And his date of death was 1974. The reason I like this is because it tells you where he was, what state he was in when he died. Okay, you want to begin search? Okay. Now you're going to have to go down to look for him. Yeah, a little so. Here we go. Kenneth Latta up okay. here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Okay. okay. So if you look at this, you will see, if, if you're trying to find a person, you need to find where they were in order to get the records, in order to look for records. And this is telling me his date of death, his date of birth. It does not tell me where he was born, but it does tell me that he was in Chicago. So if I'm gonna look for a death record, I'm going to be looking now in Chicago for that. If I'm looking for a cemetery, different story because I know he's not buried here. But this at least tells me a starting point where to look. Oh, it does tell us date of birth. Um, so it tells me Wisconsin. So now I got two different places. I got two dates. And that gives me, if I don't know anything about this person, it gives me an option as to where to start looking. That's what, what this is kind of good for. You can also send for the full 
social security death file that does cost money, but it does tell who, um, it basically tells him as he filled out the social security, where he worked, uh, what he was doing, and he, uh, where the benefits would actually go. It does tell quite a bit if that is something that you need to know. What I'm looking for is places to search. So that's the Social Security Death Index. And the other one was the o, America's o, Obituaries. Okay, so right over here, we still have Kenneth Latta's name up here and I can click on America's. Not the obituaries. He's not, he oh. didn't really have one. Okay. So, so we won't. it also okay. has historical documents. I find, um, oh, that maybe he does, Kenneth Robert. Um, the Should point I go back to the beginning just, then? Just go, just go to one and it'll show you what it, what it kind of looks like. Okay. This is, a, this is a place, so I, I found numerous, um, numerous numerous ones and sometimes it's very hard to find an obituary to even begin with because people don't have to put one into a newspaper they may not want to pay for it and they may put it into a newspaper where all the relatives are not where this person is, is living and that's what happened to actually him it's in it's in the wisconsin papers Okay. And that's where he's actually buried. So in finding the obituary tells you, of course, where the person's buried. So this just tells you, um, it's just one way of finding the death notice for a, uh, a person. Okay, do you want to get out of that then, Nance? Okay. So yeah, um, go. Mm -hmm. oh, that also has historical newspapers, historical oh, books. Sorry, my way up. Hold on. Okay. It also has that, but I, I always find the historical um, newspapers in the site kind of hard to find because you got to put in a name, and if you don't have putting in just a name is very broad, so you really have to narrow it down. But it does tell you a different way, and sometimes you, if you find what you're looking for, you have done, you have gotten a really good source. So all of that's part of America's. Genealogy Bank. Now the next database, you want to go back out there? Sure. Okay. The next big one, the one that we're stressing is Ancestry. Ancestry. We've all heard of Ancestry. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. This is but, though, unusual. If you have not gone into Ancestry, you normally have to come to the library to come and see it. This is for the first time because of the COVID-19 uh, prop problem. Ancestry is allowing Ancestry Library Edition, which is less robust than the subscription database. So you don't have as much and you cannot have a family tree and you don't get the hints, but being able to search, it has everything else. I mean, I am paying like $400 a year. <laughs> we have my family tree, which I do like. I mean, I, I, I think it with, um, my family tree maker, which is my personal um, genealogy program. And so it, for me, it, it's worth it. But just to find information, this is unbelievable. They have uh, extended it. This is kind of interrupt for one second, because this is now available to you, to Elko yeah. Library card holders from home, or from library home. users from home. So, right. and it, that's why it's it had, so neat. It had only been till what, the end of, September or something. Yeah, it was. It was like they've been extending it every month. Now it's to January first. So, so if you have research, this is fantastic. And um, we're hoping, library people are hoping that they will extend it even further. Even though I think they're going to have a conflict for the people that have a subscription, but that's not my problem. That is their problem. But um, if you look at this, if you look at the top. They got a learning center. They have charts and forms that you can download. If, you, if you've never done genealogy before, having a census chart sitting there is, is a godsend. I'm gonna click on charts and forms for a second. You can download these, you can print them off. You, you have you, a family group sheet. You can start by putting together your, your family as one family per sheet. Do not mix families. Do, if there's three marriages and it's 
three family group sheets and only the children that are of that marriage go onto that sheet. And it has an ancestral chart, which is a pedigree chart. So you can do one right after the other. This is, this is fantastic because these are sometimes, it's not that you can't find them, but this is in one spot and it's very, very neat. Um, it also has at the top, a learning center. So you got all kinds of things that you can learn about how to use this, this database to your ad, 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 advantage. And it also has, can you go down to the top a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, the new collections, they are adding collections constantly. Ancestry is incredibly aggressive in adding databases. Family search is the free Mormon one, which is if you have not been to family search, you definitely should go because it is competitive with ancestry, totally different databases though. Judy, is that familysearch.com? Org.org. Org. Org. Okay. Right. That's free out online, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to come to the library. But it's it's very competitive with ancestry, okay. but totally different. Um Let's see, they have message boards and let's go back to um, home. Okay. Um, like I said, if you have this in your personal collection, if you have a subscription and you and Ancestry will uh, take then the top 10% uh, of the databases. And then in your program, it will come up as green leafy hints. And their little little green leaf, it used to shake all the time. And then they said that people got real irritated with that. So they stopped the shaking. <laughs> and what it does is it takes you out to a hint and then you can add it to your to your program. It's very, very neat. So that's one of the things that, that's not available. In it is our not library. available. But all the databases are sitting here. So you can search census. You can search birth, marriage, and death. If you go down to birth, marriage, and death, do you see that search now uh, thing? Okay. Right here at the very bottom right there. Sorry. Right there. One yep. Okay. For which area? Uh, search vitals. The next one. Vitals. Okay. You can, every single database in here has its own search screen because every single database, you're looking at a record. How did they put their name in? How did they put the date in? What information is in it? So each one has its own personal search screen. At the home screen, there's a general search. And that is where you can find out how many people, uh, if you have um, Tompkins as your name, what are you looking at? Thousands upon thousands or millions? If you have uh, Fafart, you will have very more limited. On the left-hand side, you will see the number of records that we are talking about. And that's a hundred and what is a hundred thousand plus birth, baptisms, and christenings. Obviously you have a lot, so you need to narrow this down. And you would do that by edit search. And then this is general search now. This is purely general, no, this is birth, mar marriages and deaths. Let's say it was Thomas Tompkins. I don't have a name offhand. But I just want to see if you can get it narrowed down. And let's put in 1965 was his death. Right. I'll edit that again. Well, see, it brought it down though to 7,000. Right. So when you're searching for somebody, you're going to, I always put in the least amount that I can put, I can put in, very least. And then I see what I get out of it. And then I keep adding dates and places and spouses and fathers and keep narrowing it down. And then I go into the various, the birth marriage and birth marriage. And if I'm looking for a birth record or a baptismal record, then I go into the various different places and see what I'm looking, see if anything record comes up that would have this person. Obviously this person was in England, but that's how one searches though. Some people believe in putting in everything that they could possibly know, doing the edit search and putting in everything. And then taking out, it's adding, subtracting. That's, you're trying to figure out what in that record has the name that you're looking for, where the date you're looking for, where the place. So you and, really kind of can't get, um, you can't just, you know, you really have to play with it a lot. You can't just play with it a lot. 
because every record, uh, I have uh, James William Bangle, for instance. Well, he, he also has a cousin, James Frederick Bangle. So James William went by J.W. Sometimes it's J period, W period. Sometimes it's J.W., sometimes it's James William. So in the record, if I don't get something up and I'm thinking this guy is, should be in this record, then I have, you have to play with the name. You have to kind of, sometimes I only put in the last name. You can't do this on a common name, but if you have an unusual name like Bangle, I can actually get this with Bangle. And uh, you have to kind of play with it. On the home screen, you have a general search. And in each one of these databases, you have a Pacific search. It's a very, it's for that database. Um, if, but you can also search the, um, the, the census. Mm -hmm. And like I was telling Nancy, one of the problems with like the 1940 census is who indexed the, the census. So people have to be a little bit more generous with what their last name is. Some, they, they have mangled the names really badly. The people who indexed it were from foreign countries and um, it's sometimes quite funny to go down and look at the names. So they weren't uh, as familiar with American names and man. Oh, no. no, they just, and, and it's yeah, also it's your funny. indexes are reading the handwriting and you're getting a line at it. If you're indexing, you're getting a line at a time and you're trying to decipher what that line says. The I'm going to go into one as an example. Okay. Just to, if you haven't done this before and searched, you know, you might get, um, so now you gotta you can narrow it down to the year you want. Okay. So, so what's going to be 1790 to uh, 1940? It's every 10 years. The 1890 census was uh, burned and uh, burned in a terrible fire. It's actually water that actually de uh, destroyed it. Uh, so, but there's state census. There's city census. There's census of Indian populations. There's a census, there's a lot of census. Okay. But you will get this. Oops, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I went way I'm out. <laughs> Thought I was just going back. Okay. Um, so did you say that wait, there's state censuses as well? There's state census, there's more mortality census. And when you're looking at the census, you kind of always want to go to the bottom line because especially at the end, they will have, um, they will have, sometimes they'll pull out certain lines of the uh, people and they will ask them more questions. Okay. And those are always very, very interesting. Do we have a, is that in the 1940 census? Did they do that? No, it's in, uh, not the first uh, 1790, 1800, 18, um, what is that, 10, 20, 30, 40. Those are all little hash marks. So you have to kind of decipher the little hash marks, how many females there were, how many males. Uh, you're looking actually for the, the, the man's name on a, usually. 1850 okay. is where it starts uh, um, bringing in more things that you can actually search with. So let's say you put in Bangle in New York. How do you spell that? B-A-N-G-L-E. Oh, Bangle. In New York, and uh, I was seeing lived no, in New York, a duo was Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and I, I, I don't have a name offhand, but I'm just this okay. is what it brings up. Oh, not Grace, not Alan. I, I should say here too that if you have a question, um. We'll, we won't get into like specific family questions right now, but if you have a general question that you'd like to ask, you can use the chat feature and type in a question and we'll make sure that gets answered. So, Nancy, is that 1940 or is that 19? These are all, these first ones are all 1940. Oh, that's different then. If you oh. look at any one of those, you're going to get a huge sheet that will, um, oh, can you go back to that one screen? Yeah. Oops. One second. Trying to go back. Oops, I went too far. 50 is when, uh, can you go back to her? The, uh, yeah, this one right right here. The Grace, Grace. Okay. Just My searching, 
Grace. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just go. Okay. Just go into it now. Okay. Now, do you see the 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 names up above there underneath the name? These right. are those. The first one is the one that the person index. The person index that. That's not how you spell bangle. But that's what they saw, and that's what they indexed. Now, the other three are what other people have said, wait a minute, this is not the right person. This is what the person's name is. I don't know how Drew's got in there. Probably that's a married name. Uh, but when you look at this, you can see tons of information. Now, up until 1840, you're only going to see little slash marks, and it's a lot of them are very faint, but you can see it. Anything after that, you start seeing relationships, you start seeing um, uh, where they lived, what their nationality was. So each census is kind of a little different. So down on the bottom, that's what talks all about her. And the home on the 1940 census, it also talks about where they lived in 1935. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right here. Right. So if there's a different, so if you're looking for these people, I'm looking for records in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's where I'm going to. But if in 1935, it is, if it shows Waukesha, then I have a whole nother place I can search for. And if I can't find them, I know that they're, well, I can, I'm looking at two different places then. I'm sorry. So why did they do this in the <coughs> census, Judy? This is something that they did because of the war and they wanted, I'm sorry, excuse me. <coughs> okay, while Judy takes a drink of water, yeah. I'm just gonna mention that um, uh, the Ancestry <coughs> again is available until um, January 1st mm -hmm. um, that you can access from home all of this information. Okay. It's very dry in the library. It's very <laughs> dry. Yes. So um, you, when you can also then, these suggested records mm -hmm. allow you to search more databases just right from this page, correct? Like yeah. you can go into different censuses, but then also find a grave or newspapers.com. Mm -hmm. Social security information. <coughs> I think I might have told you the wrong. Find a grave is probably findagrave.org. <coughs> is that right, Judy? Findagrave.com. Okay. It is .com. Okay. What you can also do, let's say that you're having a hard time figuring out what the word is. You can also go up to view. Okay. And you're looking at the actual census if i can't find a person or if i can't if i want to see who else is living there you can't do this on big cities because obviously you need to have the word and everything else mm -hmm. but i can go page to page and actually search the entire census so i have a town like um west bend and i want to see who's all living there and it's um, 1920, let's say, or 18, 1870. I can find the, the, these people that I cannot find just by doing a, a search. More than likely, you can't find them. It's because the last name was mangled. Maybe they're Williams that you're looking at. Maybe they're looking and saying that that's an H. If that's the case, it puts it into a different place in the index. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, <know>. Judy. <laughs> Just uh, dry. Yes. <coughs> but you see Bangle there. Okay. And then? Drew's. So she's Drew. still living in the same house. Okay. So yeah, this, <coughs> is, all, this is all one address. And um, I like how they- The left of that. I like how they show you up above. Um, the just by hovering over the column you can see up above what what the street number was and the house number and along and, here mm -hmm. and then they highlight all the people in that address there oh, the street 
and you're in a big big city, you can virtually go to these um, maps. I can't remember the name of the map, but you can go to these maps, and it will show you the little houses. It's fire insurance maps. Okay. Is that also an ancestry? No, that's okay. the, the Library of Congress, I think it is. Okay. Okay. So let's, what other than, other than census records, then what do you go, go to? Go out there. I go back to home. Okay. Oh, we also, we have a question. Um, hold on one second. So ancestry um will it only be available at home through january 1st at this point from previously before covid 19 ancestry was only available in the library so it's called ancestry library edition is what we subscribe to patrons had to come into the library to use it it was not available from home at all no. um, but with covid 19 happening ancestry allowed it to be used by our patrons from home. And they then extended it a little bit further and a little bit further. Now they've extended it all the way to January 1st. <clears throat> Maybe they'll extend it further, we don't know yet, but as of January 1st then, it'll just then be available only back in the library again. We will have it here at the library, still just not from home. It's actually to their advantage. It's not to my advantage, just to their advantage because the more that they have people coming here, the more that people see what they have and the bigger it becomes. Um, so it's good, it's good for them. So you can search census. If you cannot find these people on the census, uh, then we have another database base called Heritage Quest Online. Okay. You don't have to go out for an answer. Oh, okay. Sorry. But it's down, it's down right Heritage Quest Online. They have had their census. Heritage Quest has had their census indexed by other people, mostly from Utah. And the naming, the naming problems are much less. So you, you do have two different places to look if you can't find, find people. And I also want to stress- It looks an awful lot like Ancestry. It's it's well, it's owned, owned uh, by, um, well, probably it's owned by Ancestry by now. Ancestry is very aggressive, very aggressive. It gobbles up databases like, like peanuts. You just <laughs> call him. Okay. But it is indexed differently though. And you have to kind of think to yourself, if I can't find this person or if the copy is really poor, go to another site, go to family search, go to some other site and see, because it is different. Heritage Quest seems to have cleaner copies for some strange reason. I don't know why. It's how they microfilmed it. Okay, so that's good to know that there is a difference in census records. There, there is, and yeah. Heritage Quest also has something that's unique, and that's digitized books. If you're looking for a county history or a book about a person, they this is one of your best chances of finding it. A lot of times people will ask me to get things from another library, and I will look on here, and I'm thinking, oh, it's right here. You know, so it is different. Can you go back to... So it to ancestry them yes <clears throat> it's just another site it's it's uh it's kind of the uh heritage quest is kind of the one that oh it's kind of at the bottom there but actually it has a lot of nice features in it okay. down at quick links quick links down here you have all of these things you can search every single one has its own search uh screen if you want to go in, if you're looking for people that might have already gotten, uh, you want to see what other people have, the public member trees is sitting there. My tree is public because of the simple fact that I believe in sharing um, names. I, I believe in that really quick. Uh, put in Floyd Baines. <clears throat> uh, no living people should be in here, which is interesting. And then put in 1995, so you bring up the right one. Oh, oops. Oh, uh, let's see, where am I on here? I can, oh, here, is it this down here? Yeah. Okay. No, it's 20, 20, 2019. So go back in and edit. <clears throat> oh, okay. That's oh, there he is. Is it? No, it's not the right one. That's no, okay. 
<laughs> oh shoot i keep doing that i'm sorry one second no, that's okay that's okay <clears throat> public member trees but you want to find out what other people have because this is a way of finding pictures like i was telling nancy and then put in death 1995. <clears throat> I was telling Nancy that after 40 years, somebody put a picture, okay, it's the top, the top one. Somebody put a picture of my great, great grandmother. And I couldn't believe it. I, I was, I've been looking for this for 40 years. I've not ever saw one, one picture. If you go into, well, these are all the facts. This is on ancestry, how you can create a tree and all these facts. And I have, uh, Quite a few, all these other things on the in the middle are um, all my records. And then it shows family and the living ones uh, should be private. My mom now has died. So I don't quite know why that one isn't, uh, oh, that one is showing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should only show people who have died. Mm -hmm. You don't have a death date. They assume something like 120 years. And then they'll put, then they'll put them as, as died. And then you will see the uh, see the name. Okay. So um, then now you you can you created this because you paid for your subscription, right? So right. this you could not do but our library edition. Everybody at home though, if I'm looking for a person, like uh, if you want to go up there to uh, to the far left hand side corner, and you're looking and you're saying, well, what does this person have? Do they have something I could use, like a source? Do they have a view, a view tree? Okay. <clears throat> um, that's kind of not my actual tree. It is my tree, but I mean, it's only a short bit. But let's say I want to, I, I have an August uh, like ski. So you want to, so I'm thinking, okay, what does he have? What does this person have? So just click on that. Where is that? Um, right in the very middle right oh, there. Right there. <clears throat> Profile? Profile. Mm -hmm. And let's say that go to the gallery. It's amazing that the things you can find on him. Now, I probably won't have very much on him, but I have all these things on him. So you're, you're gonna say, wow, there's an obituary for this person. There's a marriage certificate. And you can virtually take that and put it onto your tree. I would like you to um, say that you got it for me. That would be nice. But for the most part, I take from other people's trees and I usually tell them, thank you and they take from my tree my trees are all, all all over the place i mean it really is kind of amazing when i go onto somebody's tree i look for the pictures first to see how many of my pictures are actually there which is fine because i don't i know that there's privacy concerns and it's always a question mark what you should put online but i also feel that the they have as much right to this information as i have this i have a right to it because it's their ancestor as well. It's a yes, and yeah. they all had all these people have had a ten to eleven kids, and their ten to eleven kids have had three to seven kids, and there's kids all over the place. And for as far as your question goes, you cannot use ancestry in the library because there's no places to sit, and we will not have places to sit until COVID is more in control and they decide to, to change it. So that's why this having this at home is unbelievable. If you don't have a computer, you can call, go to the computer lab mm -hmm. and sign up there for an hour or so, whatever it is, yeah. and then you can bring right. it up. Yes, so that is one place you can sit in the library at the, yes. at the current time is in the computer lab. You, you, have a, you can have a two hour reservation in the computer lab at this time, and it's socially distanced seating in there. Right. Um, so, so with these, with this kind of information that you're showing us, Judy, even though with this library edition of the Ancestry, I can't create one of these, I could still benefit from tree, these. But you can create a tree in other places. Okay. And supposedly on Ancestry, you can create a tree without having to have an account. I've never done that. So you would have to look in for inf information on that. You can create a tree on Family Search, and then you you download this information you just send it to yourself and then you put it on your other tree family search is just so that people know because they get fooled a lot it's not fooling it's it's their concept it's a, it's a mormons 
and uh, I love the, the Mormons, but uh, Family Tree, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Family Search is a worldwide tree. Their goal is to have everybody connected and everybody technically is connected as far back as you go, they, they probably are. So anybody can go to your tree and change it. Now they got to tell you that they're changing something. But people do get awful upset when they put on information and they have it sourced and they say, this is the proper information. Then somebody comes along saying, well, I don't agree with the date, so I'm going to change it. Mm -hmm. So that's family, on family search. That's on family search. So you can also, I think it's my heritage that you can also create a tree. So these records though are all sitting here and some people have, I mean, if you go to a, a family tree and it doesn't have records, then you can pretty much figure that they're taking their information from somebody else. And so you gotta be cautious, you know. So, let me ask you a question then about, you, you mentioned before when we were talking that, um, the help features of these databases oh, are really important. Are so important. If you don't know how to use a database, go to the learning centers or the help screen because they will walk you right through it. They even got Ancestry has phone numbers and you can actually call them saying, I don't understand this and what is going on here? And they will actually walk you through it. Um, that's what the only one I know. Family search you can call too. And they will walk you through uh, through things. Uh, can we? Um, we've we've hit a number of things in here. You can search any of these categories. You can do a general search. You can download the records. You can save them. You have census to search. You have so many things to search down down here that I would be surprised that you're not doing this for the rest of your life. Which I <laughs> Well, yes. there's so, so, so many, they're adding so many things. If you go up to the very top, go to new collections. Uh, here. Right there. That tells you all the things that they are adding just for this. I think it's just this week. Oh, there was a neat thing you showed me with the maps. Oh, with the maps. yes. Can we do Let's that really quick? to home. So not only can you go into these categories, now I'm not gonna find maps. Um, it was under um, search, wasn't it? Search, yes. So, yeah. Another Where thing they you can do is, let's say you wanna go, let's go into Minnesota. It will tell you all of the databases available for Minnesota. And you can go through each one of those. You can't do a general search, but you can go into each one of the databases. And you do notice the World War II uh, draft cards. World War, World War I and World War II draft cards are really important because if you can find your person on the World War I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, World War II old people's draft, old, old men's draft, you will probably find your grandparents, your parents, your brothers, it's amazing what is on there and they're all available now. So that's, um, that's another way to search. Mm -hmm. And you get something like usually that. has two sides to it. So you gotta keep looking for the second one. So this tells all about it and it tells, see it tells, it, this is like the only description sometimes you can have with these people. Yeah. This, this is it. And if there's any um, thing that they, they're, they're putting this down so if the person uh, dies in the war, they can identify them more. And, and then I'm the here, address and you get... this is who will always know your address. Sometimes they put down an employer's name. I'm thinking, wow, okay, because they're maybe on their own or whatever. But then this is their, their, their signature. It just tells you, the, this is sometimes the only place you will find like the middle name. And it's telling you it's, it's Indiana, and that's where records are going to be. If you know, if you have a place, you can then look for records to fill this all out. The only thing I don't have on it, the only thing I don't see on this is if they were actually drafted or not drafted. I, I don't see that. Uh, they register, but I don't see them actually being drafted or not drafted. Okay. But that, that's a whole nother thing. They have an old man's draft. There's uh, 13, I believe, different drafts. 
and they all have something different. Now this map though will show you each area. It goes up into Canada. It goes up to, is that the Yukon? Or El, El, uh, Northwest Territories and yeah. Yukon. And so they have records and then they have records all over the place. They have records from just about every country and the Eastern European, Eastern, Eastern European countries are being added as they're opened up. Some of these records, of course, are destroyed because of wars. Then you go to Family Search because Family Search went over, the Mormons went over and microfilmed a lot of these records. They went into uh, courthouses, archives. It's, it's England. It's, I've, I've gone to English records a lot. And they will have um, microfilm, which has now been digitized. So the records are online. Sometimes you have to go to a family history center because of, um, of contract concerns. But other than that, it's, it's a, a way of getting around. You, you can see what's, what, what, is, what is actually there. Okay. Okay. So we're at 1246. Yeah, so I want to cover one more. Yeah database, um, right, or actually a couple, but mm -hmm. newspapers. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to so go. There's a lot of things to explore on here. I mean, it's just a never ending exploration. So if you have somebody, you can see what countries are covered. So if you have a person that came from a country that is not covered, I would definitely be contacting them and saying, okay, do you have anything on this? And uh, am I missing this? And hopefully they will think maybe they should get some databases from there. It all, it all comes down to, uh, to contracts as if the country will allow them to get the databases to have them. Um, it's really amazing though, and listening to Judy talk about this, that of the huge network, mm -hmm. it's, it's like a huge network of public service work being done, you know, to yeah. the, the quest to get records online. It's really quite amazing. Well, it's very, it's very lucrative. Okay. For them. Very <laughs> so much. All in the name of. Mm -hmm. So the name last of. one I want to talk about, it's actually a dual one. Whatever you do with newspapers, you can do with the other one. So newspapers.com and newspaper archives are okay. two huge databases. They are, they are um Should I go to newspaper.com first. They're not, they're not going to be, yeah, they're not going to be the Chicago's uh, Sun-Times or the Chicago Tribune. They have their own, their own archives. These are going to be the little guys, the little papers. Now, a lot of these papers do not have all of the pages to them. Some of them, a lot of them have been uh, 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 burned or thrown out. So what they do have is... Um, they have a good collection, but the, each one, the newspaper archives has different newspapers than newspapers.com. Sometimes it's the same, but if I can't find something in one, I go to the other one. So here's Our archive is not as um, big as newspapers.com, but sometimes newspapers.com just drives you crazy trying to find it. I would go down like, uh, if you go down to, uh, let's do that one. I wanted to show you this, this article. Um, just put in, uh, let's see. From um, .com or archives? Uh, this one. Okay. Put in Henry James. Um, here, okay. Put in Henry and then put in Finch. Don't, don't, don't put in James and Finch. Finch? Now, mm -hmm. And then okay. put in Wisconsin. Uh, click on the map for Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Do I do search first or? Put on, uh, nope, Wisconsin. <laughs> now, Excuse me. Oh, I, yeah. oh, now you got to put it in again. I'm sorry. I forgot about it. All right, now I'm going to cough. So I'm going to turn off my microphone for a second while you talk. Okay. And then put in, um, let's see if I can get this in here. Uh, that's, I need the finch. Okay, I can't do this because Nancy has to. Okay. Uh, okay, the last name is Finch. Hold on. Okay, now what I'm looking for is even this, this, fir this first one, this is a great grand uh, uh, uncle and he had an annulment from uh, his wife. 
So if you, it's further down, I think. Here it is. Waukesha Daily Freeman, uh, let's see now. We'll just bring up one because it does what the purpose of newspapers is that you're looking for the the uh, the death notices, marriages, uh, social events, uh, photos. You're looking for the things that fill out the life. So it's that top that that's a Henry Finch. I'm not sure if it's the right one, but it's a Henry Finch. But you're looking for the obituaries. The older newspapers will have the obituaries wherever they could put the actual uh, column. They don't necessarily have to have an obituary section. So it's important to know because I found them on the first page and I found them all over the place. Then you can cut, uh, you can cl actually clip this out and you can download it and you can uh, 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 add it to your records. You can uh, send it to where you need to send it. And then uh, it's just it's just very nice if you can find something. I have found um, it's, it's very hard to search, quite honestly, trying to figure out where they put this. Sometimes I can find them in newspapers.com. Sometimes I can find in newspaper archives. It doesn't mean I can find them in both. And what I also can do is I would do a Google search and I will put in Henry Finch, and then the date and the death notice or o, 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 obituary to see what I can find. Because there's things online because people had to pay for this and some people wouldn't pay for this. Sometimes it's not in the paper you think it is because there were a lot of little papers like the Elk Road Journal, for instance, there's a lot of obituaries in there. Uh, we actually index those but they're not really, once that paper's gone, it's actually gone. So you can go to any state and you can do the same thing with newspapers.com. It's just, you just have to kind of think to yourself, what am I looking for? And then put in that. It also has a lot of things. You can find things on accidents, on murders. One of my, uh, my relatives a long time ago was in his barn and was found with his head split open and they were looking for the uh, person who murdered them. But it was an interesting story. It just adds, all this adds to make the person more than just a name on a piece of paper. It makes it, it just fills it out. So newspapers are really neat. Newspapers are, newspaper archive, newspapers.com and Google searches. There's legacy out there, which has tons of, of uh, death notices. It's not on our thing. It's not on our uh, uh, thing. It's a Google thing. But uh, sometimes the, um, the funeral homes will be the only place that will have a death notice, the only place. So and like nowadays, how many people put an obituary into a paper? It's just, it's, it's all changing again. I realized I was still muted, sorry. I was just trying to point out that um that this also has the intro that how to do Those screens are really important for newspapers because you're looking for how they would be put in so an accident will probably not have the name in the 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 headline of it uh murder might not have the name or might only have um uh the um the last name or might only have uh, uh obituaries i have seen not the first name for a woman, but I will, I will find Mrs. Johnson. You know, the poor woman doesn't even have a, a first name. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, and then it will take, like I have a last name, a surname of Banks. Well, then, you know, you get up the banks of the river, the banks in the town. <laughs> and right it's, it's right, it's very hard sometimes to figure out where it is. Um, Ancestry has now added 262 million obituaries for newspapers.com. So it will bring up the indexed part of it. Then you have to go into newspapers.com and find the actual newspaper article on it. So that can be a challenge, let me tell you. <laughs> but it gets into some 
uh, um, I don't know, you have to be a little diligent in you and do with newspapers the trail right right you have to be diligent and looking for it but if i know that there's an obituary that is indexed by ancestry i know it's in there someplace i just have to figure out what words that they used and if you you can also have a date range over here so you can narrow it down to that date range and you can also browse the actual newspaper page by page by page. That's how they used to do it in the old days. And quite honestly, it's very rare that I couldn't find what I was looking for because I'm looking because the obituaries don't necessarily have to be in a certain section. They could be anywhere. Okay. So, and also you get distracted with all the other stories. <laughs> it's uh, quite easy to start reading the whole newspaper and saying, oh, this is so neat. Look at what was going on then. Uh, that's also why I like newspapers because it also tells you the events that are affecting your ancestors' life. It tells the weather events, whether there was a tornado or a terrible storm. You're thinking, well, they're living right in that town. You know, that must have affected them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way of getting a broader picture of yeah, what it's, your it's, like family members like. Going in and out. Because otherwise, you just have a name. And if you just have a name and you don't have a picture and you don't have anything to to say what this person was like. The draft cards will tell you, will give you an idea of, you know, his height and his color and his, his hair, you know, and these newspapers, if you find something on the marriages, uh, Ancestry just put on uh, uh, millions of uh, marriage, uh, anything they found on marriages in newspapers.com. I have found memorial cards. I've, uh, there was one, little eight-year-old uh, cousin of mine that died in 19, uh, I think it was 20. It was, it was very early and she died at age eight. It was just so sad. And I've never could find anything else on her. And I see her gravesite though, because she's right between the two sets of grandparents. So I wanted to see, you know, they were kind of a gruff family and I wanted to kind of, I wanted to see if I could find anything. And I found a memorial card. Mm -hmm. It was just talked about how they, how much that they, that they missed her and how, and it talked about her being taken by an illness. And it was just so moving that it brought more um, depth to that family. So would you find something like that in the marriage and divorce part of ancestry or where would those? In the death part, in the, uh, the, oh, oh, oh. Obituaries? What's the, the obituaries? I'm not sure because I don't know quite how they figured that one out. It would be in the, it would be in the death part though. Okay. Burial cemeteries. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a plug in for find a grave again because that's sometimes the okay. only place you can find an obituary. It's not part of our databases, but Ancestry will reference find a grave because they own it. Ancestry owns just about everything. So it is findagrave.com and findagrave.com. Find like Sometimes would... it's really hard to use this. I don't know why. It's how they put it onto the to the headstone. And sometimes it's just for some reason you can't bring this up. You can go by cemetery only. You can search it all. And somebody has had to have gone by. Uh, find a grave is from people like you and me walking along the headstones, taking pictures and putting the information in yeah. to find a grave. So if I have more information, I can then co uh, contact find a grave and say, you know, this is my grandfather, you know, this other person's just, uh, you know, cruising along and they will shift it over so that you can put in pictures and things like that. People have put in so much. Um, one of my uh, teammates uh, they found military military pictures, uh, death certificates have been on here. It's, it's rather amazing. And they also tell the other family members and you can click on those and then you're hoping that they're buried nearby, but you can find out where, where they are. And then you can look for information on them. The whole idea of all of this is that you're looking for information to fill out their lives, to um, point you in the direction that you're that you're going to, which is the great 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 grandparents. That's that's what you're trying to do is go backwards from you 
from your children to the very farthest you can get back or do it vice versa, whatever you choose, but you're, you're trying to grow your tree. Some people like only doing the bloodline, you know, and there's only the, 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 the male to the grandparents to the great grandparents and Don. I like doing all the cousins. I like doing, if I find information on anybody, I put it in there because whoever was their grandparents or my grandparents and vice versa. Okay, so we are at one o'clock now. I don't want to keep people long, longer, but we, I, I just, we just want to say again that, um, um, first of all, there's a lot to the genealogy, and though we only just touched, uh, touched some of the primary databases that we have in the genealogy category, um, and we are so lucky to have Judy here as our expert. And she, she may you. say she's not expert, but she's our expert here at the library. Um, so, um, you know, she is available for you to um, stop in and see her for on the time. She's usually here Friday mornings and usually here Tuesday mornings. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you have a question, you can always contact her too. Um, but using those help features in the databases can, can get you a long way to like helping yourself as well to, to find out information. Um, I know if Judy had more time, if we had more time, Judy would probably talk about like fold three, which is military records and um, and some of some my heritage. There's other, other newspaper heritage. ones, archives. We recently also just got the New York Times full database um, that I does, do think has historical Archives back to 1851. Right. New York Times. Okay. So this program will, we will have, this is being recorded and it will be available on our website. It takes a little while to process and then to get it placed on. So within the week, I would say by today's Friday, I would say just by next Wednesday, we would, should have it up on, on the website and you'll find it on our homepage of the library website. You can um, here where it says library on demand, check it out there. Um, we will have another lunch and learn. We're doing these a couple, a couple every week, I'm sorry, a couple every month on different databases. Um, we, I had a patron say to me that they didn't realize there was such a treasure of information available in the databases tab. And that's absolutely true. We pay lots and lots of money at the library for all of these databases. So you have free access and they're all in all different categories. So at our next Lunch and Learn on November 6th, we'll be talking about Mango Languages and Rosetta Stone, which are two language learning databases. Um, so I hope that you got some good information today from Judy about genealogy databases. Please contact us at the reference desk and at in the adult department if you have more questions or if you wanted to talk to Judy. And uh, we thank you very much for um, tuning in today or whatever we could zooming in today for with us for this program. And um, please feel free. I'm going to really quickly put my email address down here. If you have any um, questions or comments, you can email me at that email address. Um, that you see there in the chat feature um, or call us at the reference desk. So thank you so much. Thanks, Judy, for your expertise and time. Thank okay. you. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.